Well, hello everyone, and welcome to the Econobox Garage. I'm glad you could join me. In this episode, I'm going to finish off the wheels that I started last time. I'm going to try and get the rear axle back in the car, and also start some preparation work for getting the interior together. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoy this week's video. Well, here's all the wheels. I'm all painted up and ready to go. I'll just pick the best four and mount the new tires on them. So I'll do that uh, this coming week. And the work, the the fifth one, I'm just going to pick up a used tire to run as a spare. So now that I've got that done, I've done a whole bunch of cleanup in the garage. I've sorted a few things out. Uh, my bench is cleaned up a bit. Getting some stuff sorted out for bits and pieces I can sell. So I've been working a little bit on a prototype front hinge kit from uh, Q1 Classic Engineering out of San Antonio. Uh, but I'll save all that for a, a later date. So my next step before I get going on more body work on the bonnet is I'm going to reinstall the rear axle that I've had sitting here for quite a while. And I'll put a link above to the video where I show how I put that all together. Um, I've got my doors down out of storage. This one I had done a trial paint just to see how it would turn out. All that will get sanded back. I'm using a different paint to do the, the car that I, than I used to do this quite some time ago. Both doors are in really good shape. You can see there's some Bondo in that on this one. I'll have to clean up and what have you. So this is the condition that the, the entire car was in when I got it. Uh, it had been stripped back of all its paint and left in a uh, garage. Now it's got a little bit worse because I had this stored outside under a tarp for a year so that kind of uh, made that a bit worse. But I'm going to get that all cleaned up in the next little bit here. But before I get to work on that, I'm going to get the rear axle back in the car. So here's the rear axle. It's been sitting under the table, I think it's almost a year now since I put it together. Uh, so I'm going to basically set it under the car like this on a couple of jack stands. And then I borrowed a, a big floor jack to, to jack it up into place, which should allow me to do this uh, by myself. So let's get to work. Well, I decided I didn't need the jack stands. I'm just going to put it right on the floor jack. I'll roll it under, jack it up slowly, and bolt it into place. of things to be mindful of when putting the suspension back in at the back is you'll see these bolts that hold that go through the spring eye that's the one that goes through the radius arm they have a flat ledge or a flat edge on it and there's a tab welded to the housing it's important that that lines up because what happens is this gets drawn in tight and then it that stops the bolt uh, from turning so it makes it easier to tighten up 
Another thing that's a bit of a tricky spot to get in is this spacer. Now that spacer goes on the inside of the radius arm and then the bolt comes through from that side through here and that. So the, the trick is to try and get the bolt started, get the spacer in and lined up and then get the radius arm itself lined up and then hopefully everything lines up on this other hole. So, so I've just noticed I put the check straps in the wrong way. The curve would work better going towards the front. So I'll switch those around and then I'll get them hooked up and they go on that little stub there. There we have the rear axle mounted up in the car. I'm going to wait until the car is on the ground to tighten up the bolts for the radius arm and for the spring. And also I'll have to wait to lat until the car settles a bit to get the check strap in. Uh, it's about a, an inch short of reaching the bolt. So I'll leave those for now, but I will hook up the I'll hook the brake hose up and I'll also hook up the emergency brake cable. So let's get that done so we can move on to the next project. So here we have the e-brake line um, hooked up and up in here up in here you have the, the, the hydraulic line for the brakes that's hooked up. Let's make a note to myself to just have to put a reminder note to myself to put hose clamps on this. That's the fuel line. Don't want that popping off as we're driving down the road. And let's get on to the next little project. So I'm fortunate that I have all of the panels uh, for the interior of the car, although most of them are not in the best of shape. But this will allow me to duplicate them and um, that. So what I'm trying to do here is to figure out the smallest piece of material I can buy uh, to make everything fit. Now those are all the front panels and I also have a template for the panel that goes in the boot. So I'll, obviously I'll need two of those. If you have any suggestions or recommendations as to what material to use, just let me know in the comments section below. The original ones were hardboard, and I'm leaning towards going that, but sealing them with an oil-based varnish before I put the, uh, the vinyl over top of them. Anyway, let me know what you think and which way you would go. So I've got this laid out, uh, the scrap pieces of wood at the corners here that, that marks out a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet, and each of these rows of screws on the deck is at 2 feet. Uh, so let's see what we can come up with. got it that uh, I can get the majority of the panels out of a four foot by four foot piece. Uh, again, the row of screws here is four feet from the top edge. So that's that'll work out well. And then another two foot by four foot piece, I can get the two side panels up further in the boot. I'm cut out of that. So that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, please share it with your friends. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget that little bell icon so you get notified when the next video comes out. My name is Ian. This is the Econobox Garage. We'll see you next time. <laughs>